break from my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Our special guest today is Barbara Dershowitz, certified management, certified change management in private practice on Long Island and the author of The Secret Life of Change, 21 Flash Reveals About Change and Managing Change in Your Life or Organization. Her first book in the upcoming series, The Change Course. Lots more to talk about with Barbara. We'll be right back after this brief intermission. You wanted to see me? Yes, please, have a seat. So here's the thing. When this company brought you on, we took a chance on you. You didn't have that four-year college degree we typically look for. Right. But we gave you a shot anyway. And since then, you've worked incredibly hard and given it your all. Thanks. You've been an important asset to the team. But I don't think you can be an intern here anymore. We want to hire you. You're... You're serious? Absolutely. Find your next great employee. Introduce yourself to the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. I won't let you down. I know. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. My hometown is made possible by Herald Community Newspapers. For more local news, visit liherald.com. Got a story to tell? Call 516-569-4000. And now we return to My Hometown. We're back on My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, along with Nassau Community College student Sarah Albertson. And our special guest today is Barbara Dershowitz, a certified change management consultant in private practice on Long Island and the author of The Secret Life of Change, 21 Flash Reveals About Change and Managing Change in Your Life or Organization, her first book in the upcoming series, the change course. Sarah, I think you had a question. So we've been talking about change, which is the whole topic of our discussion, but sometimes in life, um, certain changes are going to happen if we like it or not, and they're not always going to be a positive change, and sometimes we can't help that due to life factors, and even our society doesn't always have those positive changes. How would you, as a professional, um, help somebody who's having a change that just isn't positive? Not all change is positive, uh, and many people come to me because uh, they they are having difficulty um, embracing the change that's happening in their lives. Uh, the answer is the same whether you are whether you wish to manage a change that is positive or a change that is negative in your life. You need a plan. You need to understand what your what outcome will work to your best advantage and the steps that you need to take in order to get to that outcome. Barbara, why, um, I, and I'm one of those people that change is difficult. I would do the same thing, even sit in traffic rather than take a different road. Why, you know, That's what's, uh, you know, I, I'm probably the <laughs> case or you're going to want to study me or take my DNA. But why is that? Um, why is change so difficult? Well, there are, there are three types of people when it comes to change. There are neophobes, uh, who are individuals who will avoid change at all cost. In, uh, <laughs> in the, in the case of your, um, route to work, uh, you might be neophobic and, uh, choose to endure, uh, less than favorable conditions just to maintain your route. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum are Novaturians. Novaturians are individuals who love change. They think change is fun. They upset the apple. Oh, they drive me nuts. But you know such people, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. These are people who upset the apple cart just for the fun of it and to see where all the apples land. Um, so there are people who live their lives that way. But most people fall in the middle. Uh, most people um, welcome certain changes and avoid other changes. When people come to me uh, with um, resistance to change, they typically give reasons like, I like the way things are now. I've always done it like this. I don't know what to expect. If one thing changes, then so will everything else. That's the butterfly effect. It's going to take too much work. I wasn't consulted, so I don't want to participate. And this is the one that's really at the core of 
most people's resistance to certain change. If I change now, I'll have to admit that I've been wrong all along. You know, it's so interesting because when you say that, I'm I'm that hardcore non-changer, but you said something about if someone likes it or they're interested. And if I'll, I'll use a famous athlete. If a famous athlete called me this afternoon and said, Bill, I'd like to be on your radio show. Can we have lunch and talk about it? I would change my plan. I'd give up my usual peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whatever I'd have for lunch. And I definitely would do it. So, of course, you're exactly right. I'm glad to say here you just didn't say I was just plain lazy. That's all. I thought no. I was just too lazy to change. No, people's relationship with change is very complex. Um, and... Typically, it has to do with what we expect and what we accept. Barbara, once again, I'd like people in our audience to know, um, if they're hearing this about change and they're saying, gee, this does apply to me, or maybe I could use this, or my company is closing, how could they get in touch with you? Uh, Where could they learn more about what you do? I welcome everybody to visit my website, barbarachanges.com. They can contact me directly through the website, and I will respond right away. And it's Barbara? Bar- changes barbara changes.com com. easy enough and i think you said your office is in east meadow that's is that correct. correct okay mm-hmm. so certainly central on long island people can get in touch and uh, if you're having trouble with change like me uh mm-hmm. barbara is someone you definitely want to talk to thank you sarah um something you mentioned in your book was what are the um the five f's of human change response can you explain what those five f's are and which one is the most useful there are, there Is any are, F going to embarrass us? No. People? Okay, all right. You've got to watch that, Sarah. I, t- I, I named the chapter that Barbara title a funny so look. people would, uh, <laughs> would think that and want to read it. There you it. go. <laughs> there, are, there are five Fs uh, to human change response. The first is to fight against it. And um, the most important lesson in that response is that if, unless you are in a position to prevail against the change... You're going to wind up exhausted, and the change is going to prevail. So um, often it doesn't uh, it doesn't pay to fight against it. Alternatively, you can flee, right? So your first two responses are the most primal human responses: fight or flight. You can uh, just separate yourself from the situation. I advise against that because inevitably change will find you. We already have established that change is persistent, so. If you choose to flee a change situation, one of two things is going to happen. Either the change that you were fleeing is going to catch up to you, or a different change caused by the fact that you fled is going to find you. The third possible behavioral response is to freeze, and that's exactly what... uh, what it sounds like. You just stand there, you hope that the change forgets you or ignores you or somehow passes over you, and typically what happens when you're sitting there playing dead is that the lion of change comes by, sniffs you, and eats you. Uh, The fourth possible behavioral response is to forfeit. And this is where you just completely say, I give up. I have no um, energy to fight this, and I'm going to sacrifice a bit of my own humanity in order to get what what I believe will be a measure of peace, that does not work. Eventually you grow resentful, frustrated. Uh, That's not the proper way to address change. The fifth way, uh, the fifth F is forward. And that means that you move forward in the change, managing it toward your best outcome. It's a deliberate conscious decision not to fight, not to flee, not to freeze, not to forfeit, but to move forward in an inevitable change and manage it to your best advantage. I definitely want a copy of that book. There that's you go. Really okay. good. Sarah, Sarah, that's really good stuff. And one thing I noticed, Barbara, uh, for m- members of our audience that really are not big readers, this is not a long book. No. But just what you said right there, I mean, you're dead on point. And I've gone through all those with experiences and how we can manage it, make it a little easier and, and kind of get through it. Um, I would definitely recommend that as I'm seeing it in front of Barbara. Well, the Secret you. Life of Change, 21 Flames. Reveals about change and managing change in your life. I'm going to hire you, Bill. Okay, but I want to read that. I definitely, and when I read a book, I call it a dirty book. I mess it, I underline, I sure. use the outliners, the highlighters, all that stuff. Sir? My question to you is because this book is very impressive. I think it has a lot of useful information. Thank and I you. believe our listeners can learn a lot about your book. But my curiosity is um, a book like yours, I don't think it's just written um, in a short period of time. Like I think you put a lot of thought into it. I think you put all of your advice into it. Like I really think you worked hard on it. So how long, honestly, did you work on this? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's a brief story. A woman meets Picasso walking down the street. 
and says to him, Mr. Picasso, I see that you're carrying a blank canvas and a charcoal. I will pay you anything you ask if you will just do a landscape. So he sits down and in five minutes he does a landscape and then he asks for an outrageous sum of money. And the woman says to him, but Mr. Picasso, it only took you five minutes. And he responds, Madam, it took me my whole life. Very good. Uh, what you're saying from there, I can see it's it's right on. So it's actually kind of scary, and uh, but b- very good point. By the way, Barbara, if someone is looking for that book, where can they get the book? They can get it from through my website, okay. barbarachanges.com. That will direct them to my Amazon page. It's available on Amazon in Kindle and in hardcover as well. And uh, as you said, I mean, there's no one who's not going to experience some change tomorrow, whether it's the weather, the job, something unexpected, or that magic lotto ticket that makes us rich. So uh, see what Barbara has to say and prepare for it. Here's what you need to know, Bill. You can't control the weather. Okay. You can only control your response to the weather. And that's why I have an umbrella in the there back of the go. car. See, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm <laughs> ready for go. it. Barbara, you mentioned something about the nine thresholds of change in your book, The Secret Life of Change. Uh, can you tell us what they are and how does knowing about nine thresholds, how does that help us? Right. Uh, so in the first part of my book, I explain what change is and how it works in the world. In the second part of the book, I discuss the emotion of change and my understanding of what people actually go through when they move from the status quo to their ultimate new normal. Uh, the first is decision. The, here, here are the steps. I, I don't know how much time we have, but, but these, are, these are the steps. Um, decision, you make a decision to change or a decision has been made that there's going to be change. Step number two is projection. You, in your mind, imagine how this change is going to impact you, which leads inevitably to step number three, which is disorientation, right? You're taken out of what you're familiar with, and you're not yet put into a new structure. Once you're in disorientation, you're going to experience the fourth change threshold, which is struggle. And you're going to make a decision whether you're going to flee, fight, freeze, forfeit, or move forward. And in your fifth part of this experience, you find yourself in terminus. That's where you where you take a breath, where you say, am I going to move forward? Am I going to stop? If you decide to move forward in the change process, your sixth change threshold is pivot, where you're changing your direction, which leads to number seven, which is perspective, a change in where you've come from and where you're going. The eighth change threshold is reset, where you reset all of your resources to support the change. And uh, after working uh, with my clients and guiding them through these eight uh, stages, the ninth stage is new normal, where they glide across the threshold, as I said, fully functioning, sane and intact into a new normal that works to their best advantage. I have to tell you, after hearing those nine steps, I'm sticking with my peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch today. (laughs) It's much too much work for me, but... Unless that athlete calls. Unless the athlete, (laughs) then then I'll have lunch with him or her or whoever wants it. Barbara, this has been really informative for all of us, and I think definitely a book that everybody should have on their list to read, and it's short enough that it's not going to take so much time out of anyone's life. We'd like to thank you today and remind our audience that the book is The Secret Life of Change, 21 Flash Reveals About change and managing change in your life or organization. This is Barbara's first book in the upcoming series, The Change Course. If you'd like to contact Barbara Dershowitz, you can reach her at Barbara at BarbaraChanges.com. I'm Bill Horan, along with Sarah Albertson. We thank you for listening to My Hometown.